person and those of you who are joining online and also later. Um, when I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful for the presence of hope and grateful for the gift of life. And when I think of God's presence in my life, I am humbled. Humbled by the gift of grace and humbled by the invitation to begin again. And when I think of God's presence in our faith community, I am filled with appreciation. Appreciation that I'm surrounded by each of you, whether here in person or those who are joining online. As we are gathered here in worship today, I am filled with appreciation for what each of you bring to this church family, whether that be through your music, through your words, through helping with our online availability, through the ways that you prepare and make sure that our building is able to be accessible and, and something that we can worship in, in a place of sanctuary, whether it's the way that you contribute out in our community, there are so many different ways. And today, specifically, I'm filled with appreciation because we are able to gather here together in worship. And throughout our worship service today, we will focus on our gratitude for the ways that God has blessed our lives over this past year and throughout our lives. As we begin, I invite you, as is customary for us, to take a moment to call to mind the ways that you have encountered God this morning and over this past week that reminded you that God knows exactly what delights you and what helps you to take a moment to pause and lean into the assurance of God's ongoing presence with you and what brings a smile to your face or gives you hope. Take a moment and call that to mind, those moments over this past week. share, but I'd just like you to treasure those, those moments and those memories for the moment. Hold those close to your heart, and I'll invite you to share them out loud if you would like to later in our service during our sharing our gratitude time. And if it's helpful, um, if you want to maybe jot down on your bulletin maybe what came to mind so that later in our service um, you can call that to mind again. As we continue with our service now and prepare our hearts for worship, let us praise God for who God is and thank God for all of God's blessings as we listen to the ringing of the bell. I would invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join together in our invitation to worship as is printed in today's bulletin. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Bring your silence and your shouting as introverts and extroverts. Worship God with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Bring your songs and your stories your struggles, and your sacrifices. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. God designed and created us. God understands us and is intensely interested in us. Enter God's house with thanksgiving and praise. 
Give thanks to God and bless God's name. Bring your gifts and your personalities, your strengths and weaknesses. For God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And God's faithfulness continues through all generations. God is just and wise, honest and true, caring and compassionate. And God is eternal and holy. Come, let us worship together. Our first hymn is in the New Century Hymnal, number 422. to come together to worship. For songs, prayers, and sharing that sustain us, not only in this hour, but also throughout the week ahead. And we thank you, O oh God, for the blessings in our lives and in our world. May our words of thanksgiving and our gifts of commitment reveal our gratitude and love for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. For those who might not be familiar uh, with this, the third Sunday of the month, we bring in our pennies and coins and um, we collect them and that goes eventually to purchases from Heifer International that goes out into the world to help Heifer International has a website and they often have very interesting stories about some of the projects that they do. And as I've mentioned before, they've grown tremendously in the last 20 years. From just cows and chickens to um, so much more. This, um, I'm not going to read you the whole article, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. But this is about a project that 
is going on in Ecuador. And it's called a, a food basket program. There are uh, about 18, 18,000 farmers have their supports in Ecuador with training tools and resources to grow food using agroecological practices, which is another thing that they've grown really, Hepper has grown really strong in. Uh, a sustainable farming method that nourishes the soil, reduces waste, and respects the natural ecosystem. For many smallholder farms, harvesting from the land doesn't just determine what will end up on their dinner table that evening, it's also the beginning of a journey that will go on to nourish the wider community. When the COVID-19 pandemic shuttered markets and crippled livelihoods, Heifer Ecuador partnered with many of the local producers to develop a food basket delivery system, connecting produce grown by rural farmers to buyers in city centers. Today, the food basket program continues as an innovative method of combating rising hunger, connecting vulnerable families to healthy sustenance, and keeping much needed income in the farmer's pockets. So there is a lot more to this article. If you're interested, you go to Heifer International and you can find it. Oh, I forgot the basket to bring. Um, I'll grab a plate and I'll come.
ask you to refer to your bulletin. We are going to read responsibly today's scripture, which is from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to God, all of the earth. Worship God with gladness. Come before God with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us, and we belong to God. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving, and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God, and praise God's name. For God is good, and God's love endures forever. God's faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Our next hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth, number 92 of the United Methodist Hymnal. God's unconditional 
and unfailing love and care for each of us. For indeed, expressions of gratitude are a vital force in the world and are a profoundly dignifying act that builds relationships, communities, and healthy human hearts. This is our time as a church family to raise our grateful praise and to give thanks for all that God has given us. It is a time for us to be mindful of the good that encircles us. It is a time for us to be mindful of this faith community and friends and family who encourage and care and are examples of God's loving ways. This is a time to remember and be grateful that we find a home in God's creation and that the earth gives us good food, food to sustain and help us to grow. And this is a time to honor and praise God for the ongoing ways that remind us that even as the seasons change and sunshine comes and goes, God's loving care for us is unending and never changes. As I mentioned at the start of our service today, the praise that we share might include what caught your attention this morning or over this past week that reminded you that God knows exactly what delights you and what helps you to take a moment to pause and lean into the assurance of God's presence with you or what brings a smile to your face and gives you hope. What we share this morning might also include your joys from this past week that you would like included in our prayer time that will follow this time of sharing our gratitude. And with that in mind, I would just ask you, please hold any concerns that you would like to share for us to keep in prayer today. There will be a time for that, but we're going to start off today with our time of praise and gratitude. If you feel up to coming up here to share your story or expression of gratitude this morning, I invite you to do that so that those online can hear all of your story, all that you want to share. Um, otherwise, it's okay to remain where you are. Just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you and I will try to capture the essence of what you're sharing for, for those at home. And so I just invite you now, if there is something that you would like to share this morning, your praise and your joy, um, to do that at this time. And as any of you might want to come forward or if you raise your hand, I would, I'll begin by sharing um, this that Tom Clark asked me to share on his behalf. Um, he's out of town still today and will be traveling back today. So this is what he wrote. First and foremost, I am thankful for my family and the successful lives they are living. And secondly, I am grateful to have reconnected with a longtime friend from college days after losing Jean three years ago. We enjoy each other's company and being of good health have been able to travel extensively this past year. And for these things, he is grateful. And so I just open up to any of you now who would also like to share. We'll bring the microphones to you, or if you would like to come forward. I'll go up. I just like to say um, gratitude for my father-in-law. Um, Forty-seven years in my life. His birthday would have been today, ninety-one, but he passed on Tuesday. Um, just gratitude for his. Um, wonderful fourth generation influence in this town. Um, his five grandchildren got to see him. He waited. Uh, he got, he knew, he kept track. And from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon, 
And on the last day before he transitioned, his best friend of 90, well, I don't know how many years, but his friend is 92, he's 90, almost 91. They got together and they got to have some time. And he, within an hour, he started his transition. He passed on Tuesday, and I just wanted to say gratitude for his life, Vernon Lyle. And we are grateful to you. And so let's together say thanks, sweetie, to God. Is there anyone else? Tom's tongs probably, but I'm very thankful for my family. Uh, we were all able to get together um, this fall for my son's second wedding, and um, there were three. I have three children, and their wives are partners, and six grandchildren, five of whom could come. They're just all great people, and I'm very thankful for that. They. Um, they're loving, they're caring, and some are trying and searching right now in their lives. But they all took time to come and be as a family. And I, I was really grateful for that. And I'm also very grateful for my own good health. And we heard you, and so we join you in saying, Thanks be to God. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Well, first of all, I would like to mention that um, there was a glorious sunrise that I got to witness this last week. And I'm always grateful with the, those beautiful colors, in this, the color palette in the sky. It was just gorgeous. So, and I don't always um, go outside that early in the morning, but that was gorgeous. <laughs> And um, some of the things that I thought about and I'm grateful for, um, of course, my family and my partner for 43 years, my, especially, who, who has taught me so much about how to um, have a sense of humor and how to uh, maintain calmness instead of getting anxious all the time. <laughs> Through his uh, example, I've, I've been able to center myself just a bit over the years. <laughs> um, I'm not the same person that I was 43 years ago, and that's good. <laughs> that's, that's good. I, I am in some ways, but... Um, and um, I, this really isn't to call attention to myself, but I am grateful that I still have my singing voice. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm getting off of close to 70 and I still have it and, I, and I'm really grateful for that, I, it's, that it, I've kept it. And then last, this is a silly one, but I, every day I am grateful as I watch my sister's cats just be so happy. I'm grateful that I could bring them home with me two days after she died and that they're still here. <laughs> Almost five years later, being so happy and continuing to blossom, and that—that's—that's that's something that I care. Gratefulness I carry around with me every day. It's so meaningful, and we are grateful too. And so we join you in saying, "Thanks be to God." Is there anyone else who? Would Well, Dan is making her oh, way forward. You go. No, you go. As she's making her way forward, I'll just share um, on behalf of my mom, I know one thing that she's been very grateful for this year is that she was able to um, experience a, a childhood dream of being able to travel uh, through the fjords of Norway and, and being grateful for my cousin who was able to travel with her and help make that possible um, since she wasn't able to travel on her own. So just being able to experience that 
being nature, and, and for that's one of the places that she experiences God as well, and just that absolute blessing of family and friends and um, the opportunity to travel while she still can. Oh, I don't really like being up here. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so yesterday I was outside and doing some yard work. And all of a sudden, I was feeling kind of anxious and started thinking about the upcoming week because it's Thanksgiving, right? And I uh, don't have a lot of family here. So I started to feel really sad, you know? And all of a sudden, I don't know what kind of birds they were, but there were hundreds of them that were flying over the hills. And it just made me stop. And it was like God was saying, you know what, Pam? It's okay. It's okay. Um, you have friends that are becoming family, and I have to remind myself of that. Um, and I got a reminder of that on Monday. Monday morning, I got a call before I was going to go into work from a coworker. Her car had broken down, and she was really upset, and she's like, I don't know how I'm going to get to work. And I'm like, we get up, Terry. And um, she said, great. So I picked her up, brought her to work. She brought me lunch for doing that. And it was like, I've also been feeling a lot like I give and give and give, and I don't get, and I know that sounds kind of selfish, but it was exactly what I needed on that day. I needed somebody to do something for me, and they came through. And that's God, that's God at work in my life, and I have to keep reminding myself of that because I forget. I do have people. Part of the reason I came to this church is because I'm craving some connection. I need some friends, I need some family. And I'm finding that here, so I'm super full of gratitude to you. So, thank you. <clears throat> and we are so glad that you had that experience, and we're also glad that you are here with us. And for all of that, we say thanks, thanks be to God. God. I'm Kathy. I forgot my name today. <laughs> um, like Deanne, I felt the need for family and friends, and this church has been wonderfully welcoming, and Pastor Jim, I'm very grateful for you. And my sister's here today, and you all helped pray for her through her open-heart surgery. So what a blessing she's here, and um, because my family's very, very far away, it's really special that she's here for the holiday week. It's, it's a hard time. And that song... Um, for the beauty of the earth, that really mm -hmm. touched me because I've been thinking a lot about that. This, instead of wallowing in misery because I miss my mom and my husband so much, I feel their presence more. And for that, oh, I thank God because they were such a great presence in my life. And they're, they're still there. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that my sister's here. Thanks. We're grateful that you're here too, Linda. Welcome. And for all of those things that, that Kathy shared, we join you in saying thanks to me to God. God. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward or have the microphone brought to you? First of all, uh, grateful to God for His love and His kindness, keeping us all alive. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for my family. My wife has uh, been here for uh, two weeks now. She was supposed to have left again on caregiving duties uh, last Wednesday, but I fell sick and I'm still sick. So that's why she's still here. And I'm grateful I'm sick so that my wife can stay with me. <laughs> I'm grateful for all our, our sons, uh, all okay, doing well, wherever they are, in Arkansas, and uh, one in uh, San Diego, in the Navy, is going back to Fiji to get uh, their children back to the U.S., and they're all well. And divided by the ocean, we have uh, another two sons in Fiji, and uh, I'm grateful for those uh, genius minds who created the internet. 
<laughs> I know uh, a few years back when I was studying in England, we used to write letters. And we get letters every month, uh, but now we do video call every day, so I'm able to see their faces on a daily basis. So thank you and I thank God and thank you for this church. And we are grateful to you and we join you in saying thanks be to God. God. Is there anyone else this morning that would like to come forward or we can bring the microphone to you? Thank you for your sharing. And I just invite you to continue to, to share your stories as you continue to weave that tapestry of gratitude and to remind and encourage each other. An additional way that we can do that before we share our concerns and continue into our prayer time is to also let others know through our writing something to them. Perhaps it's even to somebody who's here today, but perhaps there's also somebody that you're thinking of who has touched your life and blessed you, that God has utilized in a way this past year to make a difference in your life. And so I just invite you to take a few moments now to take one of the one or two or more of the hug alerts in front of you. Today we're going to call them a hug alert of gratitude. And take the opportunity to, to write a note to somebody who has blessed you this past year. And then those of you who are online, if you would like to do this as well, um, if you have something that you have to, to write on and would like to send that to us, we can send it out or you send it. You can also go online. Um, we have a, the hug alerts on our webpage and you can fill those out there and we'll um, mail those off for you. And today after you write some of these uh, hug alerts of gratitude, there'll be a time during our, when we pass around the offering plate, um, you can put those hug alerts in the offering plate and we will mail them on your behalf if it's likely that we do not have the address in the church office, please just invite that on the outside and we'll mail it for you. Otherwise, I invite you to take it with you, mail it yourself, or deliver it in person if that's somebody that's close by that you would like to do that. top where it says hug alert, if you add under that of gratitude, just let them know, especially what you're letting them know that you're appreciative of. I'll give you a couple more minutes to finish writing.
addition to our praise. I'm grateful that we can also take our cares and concerns to God in prayer. And at this time, before we pray together, I invite you to share any concerns that you might have on your heart and mind today that you would like us to keep in prayer. Thank you. I'm happy to report that our daughter Tracy's uh, surgery went quite well. I spent uh, eight days with her uh, this past week plus, and um, and all of the tests, the biopsies, everything came back saying that she is. In addition to on the men, she's also uh, totally cancer free. So that was a wonderful thing. And talking about hug alerts, I happened to be there when her hug alert arrived. She was so touched by that. Aww. So uh, there is value to hug alerts. Andy, Andy <laughs> shares an update on Tracy's recent surgery um, that seems to have gone well. She is cancer free at this time. And, and he had the, the honor of being there when she received a hug alert from somebody here from our congregation. And just how touched she was to have received that. Um, thank you for letting us know about that. And for this, we say thanks be to God, and we will continue to keep her in prayer. And so we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Are there any care, other cares or concerns that you would like us to hold in prayer today? Holly? One of our children um, or is struggling with choices, making choices about their marriage. And it's weighing heavily on our hearts. Mm -hmm. Holly shares that one of her children is making a very, is making decisions about um, their marriage and uh, it's weighing heavy heart on the hearts of both Holly and Richard. And so we will keep you in prayer. And so all of you please join me in saying, Lord, yeah, hear our prayers. Is there anyone else this morning? I would also like to just um, invite you. Today is also, it's a day of many different things. Today is also um, Transgender Remembrance Day. And so I would just ask you to also um, join me in honoring that and say, Lord, yeah, hear yeah. our prayers. Uh, you reminded me. this morning um, that happened to overnight and um, I asked prayers for uh, this happened in Colorado where somebody went in and shot up a um, gay bar during their, a celebration and I I just I don't understand it so prayers for those who lost their lives and who are Prayers for those who cannot seem to find a way around the hate. Holly brings um, the sad news of hearing uh, this morning that there was a uh, shooting in Colorado last evening um, at a gay bar where some lost their lives and where several others uh, were injured. And just keeping all of those impacted in prayer and also to pray for those who are filled with this kind of hate and that is hard for us to wrap our heads around just for some sort of transformation of those hearts and those actions so that these types of things will stop. Um, and so we hold all of that in prayer and we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Is there anyone else? this morning with any cares or concerns. As we begin our time of prayer, let us do so with a moment of silence. And during this time, I invite you to spend a moment to offer your own words of thanksgiving to God.
Thank you, now join me with a congregational prayer of thanksgiving. You'll find it in the insert of your bulletin. This to come your congregational prayer of thanksgiving, and you will read where it's bold. <clears throat> Loving and generous God, with all your creatures, great and small, we praise your bounty and your goodness. For you reveal your generosity in the harvest of land and ocean, in the cycles of the seasons, and in the wonders of each creature. God, we thank you for the abundance of blessings you have given us over this past year. For food and water, clothes, shelter, family, and friends who have provided connection and fellowship. For the simple pleasures of life, such as our creative projects, exercise, music and books, and coffee conversations. For the health and strength to appreciate the wonder of life, and for needs met and desires fulfilled, we give you our thanks. For hearing and responding to our joys and concerns, we give you our thanks. For your all-inclusive and unconditional love and welcome. For journeying with us every step of the way. For the times you provided comfort and strength. And for the times you filled our hearts with joy and laughter. We give you our thanks. For these and all blessings, we give you our thanks, O loving God. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal now to one o two in the United Methodist hymnal. Now thank we all our God.
if you noticed your bulletin insert, one is the side that we've been saying prayers and uh, readings. The inside is written from uh, the UCC leadership, um, touching on from bread and cup to faith and giving. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to read it, please do this afternoon. Throughout our faith journey, we are extended several invitations, from the invitation to make our confession of faith, to the invitation to care for a sick neighbor, to the invitation to bring food for the next church event, or coffee hour, <laughs> to the invitation to Christ's table. Our life in the community of faith is full of invitations. The invitation we receive to come to Christ's table carries both an assurance and responsibility. One of God's assurances is that the gift of a community of faith where a sense of belonging makes us a church family. One of our responsibilities is to recognize and respond to the biblical teachings that a portion of the blessings in our lives are marked as being for the transformation of the world by our sharing with others. It is what we mean when we consider from bread and wine to faith and giving as a living and intentional response to the grace we have received. Our faithful financial stewardship is one way we are invited to respond to Christ's invitation. Our generosity funding the missions and ministry that we are deploying as a sign of God's realm is among us. When we make an intentional decision about what we bring before Christ, we extend a blessing of health and wholeness to all of creation because we are certain that this is what ultimately is God's desire. The world is broken and hurting and we are called to be a movement for wholeness among its many fractured pieces. Commitment Sunday today is the annual event in the life of our congregation that allows each of us the opportunity to make a difference in our church and in our missions to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. invite you if you have one of the prepackaged containers if you want to go ahead and pre-start that um, just very carefully pull it away from you the first part of it is the top plastic layer and the juice underneath it is the um, the little bit sturdier um, tab just be very careful but please um, wait until the part of the service when we will eat and drink it together At the communion table, which is not exclusive, for it is open to all people, the loaf and the cup are visible signs of God's pure, unbounded love for all humanity. Each time we celebrate communion, we are all given the opportunity to taste and imagine God's gracious providence. God invites, God provides, God pours until our cups overflow. Such abundance as this gives us the opportunity to allow God's blessings and unconditional love to first be poured into us and to then overflow into the lives of others as we express our gratitude to God by making a commitment to generously share with others what God has given to us. And that is what we will begin with today, is our receiving of that into our lives. In his own life, Jesus embodied the abundance of God's love for all humanity. 
Although he did this throughout his entire ministry on this earth, Jesus' most generous and everlasting expression of God's expansive love came through his death on the cross. On the night that he was crucified, Jesus gathered with his friends, friends like us, friends from all walks of life, friends who didn't even realize what was going on, like sometimes we don't always, but Jesus said, come, you are all welcome. I don't care what, what has gone on in your life. I don't care what others say about you. You are all welcome. And gathered with his friends for that meal, Jesus took the bread. And after blessing it, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you eat it, remember me. Let us pray. Jesus, as we take this bread, let it be a sign of all you did for us and who you are for us. Thank you for this bread of life. After sharing the bread, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave it to them to drink, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for all. Let us pray. Jesus, as we drink this cup, let it be a sign of all you did for us and of who you are for us. Thank you for your generous and everlasting expression of God's expansive love. Amen. for prayer. Dear Jesus, every time we eat and drink this meal together, we do it in remembrance of you. This great Thanksgiving is a reminder of your love and provision. As we conclude this communion nourished in body and soul, we ask your blessing on the many tables we will eat at this week. And we also ask that you encourage and sustain us so that as your blessings continue to fill us, they, were, they will overflow into the lives of all those we come in contact with through our gifts, through our time, and through our talents. Amen. So it is now time for our offering. And as the ushers come forward, I would encourage you to put into the plate a financial gift for United Church, a hug alert or more, or two or more that you might have written for others um, for the church office to send out, and also your pledge card for United Church for the coming year. <laughs>
We give you thanks and praise for all of your gifts to us. As we offer our gifts and lives in this moment, may we become imitators of you, O oh gracious God, who holds nothing back from us, but is generous and gracious with all that is yours. We now dedicate this offering to your work here on earth. May this collection and all that we've pledged be used wisely and diligently, so that your all-inclusive love may be known widely. As we dedicate this offering, we offer ourselves to you. For these gifts of money are but tokens of ourselves. Take and use us that our hands may reach out in service, our feet may walk the difficult path of offering your radical love to all, and that our words may be words of peace and hope. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Gracious God, you have filled our lives with abundance 
and we thank you. As we live now to continue to live out our thanks, may we be your channels of blessing to all those we meet. Amen.